All right, so as you can see, I have down here the Super Nintendo controller spliced in the middle. Let's see if we can't get that to focus. Going into a breadboard, and then the breadboard comes to this other other side of the extension cable, anyways, that runs to this controller. In the middle, I've tapped into the serial pin, the latch pin, and the ground, and hooked it up to an Arduino, which then runs to my computer, and is run by this code here, that produces this picture here, that is then put on the stream, so that it captures the input from the controller while actually playing the Super Nintendo console. Let's set this up so you can see me playing the game. So, you can see in the bottom right, all the inputs that I put in the controller is captured, and it's working on the Super Nintendo. There's a couple issues with this, um, because I didn't use, I only used the latch pin, which tells the controller when to take inputs, and then I timed everything from there. Sometimes the bits shift by one, and the controller thinks that it's plugged, or that, like, say, whenever you press A, it's pressing right on the controller because it's pulling the bits at the wrong time. And this doesn't happen that often. I don't know if it still happens. I did some stuff with timing. Um, the interesting thing with that is that the, uh, the Arduino actually isn't pulling fast enough with regular code because of the way that it's compiled. So I need to go back through and probably redo some of it in assembly code instead of using delay for microseconds. I need to um, like use no ops and stuff in assembly so that I can get a f like a more fine-grained control of how long it's delaying before it reads the serial lines. Um, I tried. I said I'm basically doing this by attaching an interrupt to the latch, and I start pulling whenever the latch goes based on the delay. Um, I tried using the clock as well, but the thing was is the Arduino wasn't pulling fast enough the, the clock pin uh, using just the normal library. Maybe using assembly I can make it pull the clock fast enough that I can actually rely on the clocks uh, up and down. And the way that the controller works is the latch tells it to, uh, tells the controller to take the current state of the buttons and then the clock tells it uh, whether or when to pull, or when when it needs to put the, the data on the serial connection for each button. Uh, the first one happens at the fall of the latch, the, re the rest happens at the rise of the, well, the rise of the latch actually, is when the controller puts the first button on, which is the B button, the rest happen at the rise of the clock. And then the Super Nintendo, or the Arduino, should pull at the fall of the latch, or the fall of the clock. Um, like I said, it wasn't quick enough to actually be able to pull the, the pin. Like, it's like a 4.5 microseconds for a digital read on the Arduino. And there's only a 12 microsecond window. Six of that being high, six of that being low. So it actually became kind of a problem um, as far as trying to rely on the input um, of the clock to time the controller. Granted, if we rely on the latch, we should be able to time the rest of it without the clock. So it's not a big deal. But, which is kind of what I did here, but I have some timing issues because I'm using delay in microseconds, which isn't actually that precise. Um, I think the lowest it can go is four, and then the only reliable is like four, eight, 12, 16, apparently. So I need to, if I use uh, assembly code and do no ops, I can actually control how many cycles it skips, which should give me a pretty fine grain of control over, over when I'm pulling. But uh, it was an interesting challenge, one that I didn't realize, you know, at first I was pretty frustrated because I thought the code was working, you know, the code made sense uh, from a logical perspective, but from a not happening fast enough perspective, it didn't, which didn't make any sense to me because it's a 16 megahertz clock, so I figured it would work, um, and theoretically it could work if you had a faster clock, I guess, maybe twice the speed, uh, or, you know, three or four times the speed. Um, so who knows, um, but it was an interesting challenge and it's going to make me go learn assembly, or at least some assembly so that I can do at least a little bit as far as making this more precise. Um, I haven't really like completely tested this, but I have noticed that before I made some modifications, the, uh, what was it, the 
A button will show up as a write press every once in a while. That's pretty easy. I just write in the code to detect whenever a, a whenever a write button is pressed based on what I'm seeing over the serial connection. And if it happens, you know, complain because I know that I'm only holding the A button. So pretty easy to test, and I'll get around to testing it a little bit more uh, to try and get knock the timing out. But hopefully, using assembly maybe I can also rely on the clock like you're supposed to to know when you need to do reads and writes. In this case, really only reads. But yeah, so I'm just gonna play through the end of this level to kind of show you uh, the controller display on the screen, which is the program that I wrote uh, to take the information from the code that I wrote on the Arduino that passes it to the computer. Um, pretty neat. Really fun learning experience. Uh, I didn't know anything about an Arduino before this, and I really don't know a whole lot about hardware. Uh, but now I'm intimately familiar with the uh, protocol a Super Nintendo controller works to communicate, which is pretty basic. Uh, just some serial input. There's serial information on the data line based on the latch and the clock, so pretty simple, but also demonstrates to me how important timing is, because even though I was writing a program to read the data, uh, the timing was off, so it didn't really matter that I was waiting to pull the data because the data wasn't getting pulled fast enough, so... Or at the right times. So, yeah, that's, uh... That's how this works. It's pretty neat. Wrote all the code myself. Um, I used examples to kind of uh, build the code that I worked off of, but... In the end, I actually had to end up writing all the code myself because the code that I originally used to basically make the Super Nintendo controller a, a USB controller essentially doesn't really work with pulling the Super Nintendo uh, or pulling the or pulling data off the line, you know, kind of intercepting it because of the fact that the Super Nintendo is driving the clock instead of the program, you know, driving the clock. It sends the clock signal out, then it waits, then it pulls. So that was pretty precise, but. Pulling the Super Nintendo in the middle uh, is actually a little bit more difficult, and there's still a lot, to, a lot of optimization I can do here, playing around with assembly and whatnot. Um, hopefully, to make this work better. Uh, I mean, it works pretty much 99.9%. .9%. I haven't tested it since I made the modification to see if the A button ever flashes yellow. I'll hold it for a minute here, see if it does. Uh, it maybe happens once every. 30 seconds, if that, and like, I don't know if, like, why that would happen, but uh, it may be solved now because I took a micro delay out and I had some no ops so that it wouldn't fall behind, I guess, uh, or get ahead of, uh, of when the serial console is, or when the serial data is being pulled. Because uh, it's a 12 microsecond window, and every 12 microseconds there's a, a new, new button that's being sent down the serial line. Pretty cool, and that's how the Super Nintendo can essentially send data over three wires. I mean, you've got five wires because you have a ground and a five volt, but the other three wires is what it's used to send 12 buttons. There's actually, it actually pulls for 16, which is interesting because there's only 12 buttons, so it'd be interesting to see, like someone said, uh, what happens if you send data down the extra four buttons. So yeah, I just wanted to demonstrate kind of what I've been working on and show it off because I think it's pretty neat. It was a fun learning experience, so 